I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar Michigan. We're back in Detroit, the Motor City, and if you haven't been down here lately, you should come to Detroit today. Not sometime soon, but today, because the things you do today are the things you did yesterday, tomorrow. Think about it. Does that make sense? I love coming to Detroit because there's a true renaissance happening here. Inspired people are finding opportunities, new businesses are opening everywhere, and more and more people are venturing out to reconnect with the city. It's just a blast to see how Detroit is evolving and growing. You could just, you know, hop on the freeway in a matter of minutes. You could, you know, you can be and have Greek food. You can have Polish food and have tramic. I love the, the young people starting up these really cool, innovative things. Detroit is the city life. What's better than that? It was also a great place to try out a new camera. I got to tell you, I don't know what stranger, what you're seeing right now, or the looks I was getting from people driving by. I just found out that Detroit's actually a French word, Detroit, meaning the toi. Now, toi is three in French, so it means it's a Latin-based thing. It means the three reasons you should come to Detroit, because it's a great place to eat, stay, and play. I just made that up. Sorry. Since we're kind of on a French roll here, my first stop in Detroit was a place called Good Girls Go to Paris. And if you like to eat, you're in for a real treat at this place. Now, about two years ago, on a dream and a dollar, Victoria Blanchard opened the doors here. And now, Good Girls has become one of the coolest places to chow downtown. Her specialty is crepes, and she's got one for just about every appetite. I'm with Toria at Good Girls Go to Paris. Say uh, bonjour. Bonjour. Comment vas-tu? Uh, je vais très bien. Oh, merci. Um, and we're going to, she's going to actually teach me how to make a crepe at Good Girls Go to Paris. Even though I'm not a girl, she's going to teach me how to make a crepe, so. That's OK. All right, it's pretty simple. Understatement of the century. I'm going to talk you through it. You're going to grab this up, hold the, the lid underneath the batter. Ah. Simple. And you're going to pour it on there, pour it. Mm. Just in, ah, right in the middle. That works. Right, OK. All right. All right. Here's your. My little rake. I'm going to. Uh, go for it. And scoop it around. Oh my gosh, you're a natural. Now, Toria has an amazing menu of crepes, all named after good friends of hers. But based on my first visit, I'm pretty sure you won't be seeing one named after me on the menu anytime soon. This is the Le Serra, and this is the Le Mess. What would your advice be to somebody else who wants to follow their dream here in Detroit and start a business? Well, I mean, it's a, it's, in my mind, it's the perfect location. Uh, Detroit? Absolutely. You know, you, you have a captive audience right here in Midtown. I'm surrounded by four museums. There's two universities. Mm -hmm. This, a lot of people walking around. It's a, it's a good area, it's a good market, it's a good start. That's what I've been telling people. Right now, Detroit's almost like an open palette. There's so many opportunities Absolutely. and so many places where you can, you can there's a renaissance happening here where you, can, where you can start a business and succeed and flourish and thrive, and right. that's what you've done. You know, when I look outside the window and I see people milling about uh, in the park Sheldon where we're at now, right. all the, the spaces are occupied now. Right. Well, I used to be one of those silly suburbanites that, you know, I just stopped coming downtown. About a year ago, I discovered Cliff Bells, oh, yeah. which is a wonderful place to go. And now, all of a sudden, I'm discovering place after place downtown Detroit. There's so much to do here. Absolutely. There's so many cool people here. It's I rediscovered the city. I think that the business, especially the business community in Detroit, were very supportive. A lot of people are friends, and you know, the people that have businesses here, especially in Midtown, downtown, it could be you know different age, different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. But we're all very supportive, and we all call each other friends. And I think that's where I get a lot of my positivity and a lot of my you know. Uh, support and drive to keep going and, and you know stay positive, but it's it's easy to stay positive. You're a very positive. You're a lot of fun to be with, as a matter of fact. It's not just because you cook good crepes. No, no, not just for that. But. It's talented and motivated people like Toria who are helping lead the new Detroit Renaissance. Her story is inspiring. Her enthusiasm was very contagious, and her crepes alone are worth a trip to Detroit. Next, I got to meet a man who's literally changing the lives of young people in Detroit and around the world. Aaron Dworkin is the founder and the daily inspiration behind the Sphinx organization. 
which is leading the charge to increase the participation of underserved black and Latino youth in classical music. I had never heard of the Sphinx organization until just recently a Facebook fan told us about you guys. Cool. cool. And at first I was puzzled. It sounds like a, a, like a secret organization. Do you have a secret handshake or something? <laughs> right. I wish, I wish. Where, where uh, unfortunately, it's not that cool. Actually, it is that cool. And so is Aaron's personal story. I'm a violinist, started when I was five, uh, originally grew up in New York. Uh, I have a bit of an odd background. I was adopted when I was two weeks old, um, and my uh, adoptive family uh, were white and Jewish, uh, and they had a birth son, my older brother, all scientists, so I was literally the black sheep of the family. <laughs> and uh, the only one in arts and music, you know, all of that. Uh, and, uh, and it just played this role in my life from a very early age. Um, where it is the greatest constant in my life. Uh, I remember playing the violin before being able to read. I heard somebody say the other day that you're literally changing the face of American symphonies. And I thought, what a beautiful statement, because you are literally changing the faces that are of the people that are in the symphony orchestras. Unfortunately, although this is an amazing art form um, that we kind of as humans express ourselves through, less than 4% of orchestras are blacks and Latinos combined. And so we look at how can we try and build that diversity, not just on stage, right. but also behind the scenes at orchestras, and also, most importantly, in the audiences. We want more people, more people in our country to be able to experience this amazing art form. We have a proven kind of track record now for 15 years of doing the work that we're doing and making a difference in the landscape, not only within classical music, but in society itself. Not only is music this amazing kind of avenue through which you can express yourself, but it can also be a viable career. This could be your profession. Just like it's become for Aaron, a great man who's making a difference for underserved youth here in Michigan and around the world. Now on to another cultural experience here in Detroit that'll expand your horizons all the way to another continent. If you've ever been driving around Detroit, you've probably seen the building behind me here and wondered what the heck is that? Well, I'm gonna go find out right now from the guy who's responsible for it. And you might wanna come with me, it's freezing out. I'm at Dabble's African Bead Museum and just walking around the building is an awesome experience. The entire outside of the museum is an artistic expression of the man inside and that man, is dabbles. Yeah, I found your place on the Webernet, you know, yes. that place, that thing you need for the computer for? Yes. And I, the pictures of this place fascinated me. Um, and when I got here, it's even more fascinating and more incredible when you see it up close and personal, the building here. What is it exactly you do here? We are an African bead museum. And the goal was originally to preserve beads. We were gonna take a building and show beads and have people coming in to see the beads. We ran out of money, so we decided to uh, just beautify the place. Dabbles is a true character, and you can tell he's put his heart and soul into this. Walking the grounds with him and learning about the history and culture that surrounds his place was a great way to spend the afternoon. And I even got to meet another colorful character who hangs out here. Yeah, well, ever since I got here, I've been yeah. hearing this ethereal kind of music. Where's that coming from? That's coming from a drummer named Ife, who plays a, a lot of different instruments. And he's over in the corner. I'm going to go check him out. Yeah. He's a drummer? Yes. I'm going to go check him but out. But he's playing a choral. OK. So are you usually here when uh, people come to see the, to the museum? Oh, yeah. And what's your main function here? To provide the ambiance, the music. Ambiance and music, that's cool. So if I come back down, can I jam with you again? Sure. Cool. Now, that was a cool guy. This is a great place. I'm going to bring my daughter here buy some beads. As always, we had a great time in Detroit. There are so many interesting people to meet and inspiring stories to tell here. We will definitely be back for more. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing Development Authority.